Hey everybody out there, my name is Drynix, and as someone who has a little bit of experience in the software engineering world, aka six years, and has a computer science degree from U of I, I know what it's like to fight bugs all day. Now, I didn't do it with a gun myself, I did it with a debugger and a terminal, but you know, these are the same things, right? Alright, maybe it's a little bit different, but this is the Bug Butcher. $7.99 came out on the Steam store on Tuesday. This is of the Pang genre, and if you don't know what that's referring to, it's games like Super Buster Bros. Basically, you can only shoot up. You can move from side to side, but you don't have a jump button, and you can't shoot left and right. Is this game worth your time? Well, that's what I'm here to answer. But before I begin, I want to make sure you guys know that this key was obtained from Evolve PR for the purposes of review. That won't change my opinion in the end, but you guys should know that because of FTC guidelines, as well as the whole morals thing, you know? Now, with this game being of the Pang genre, its objective should be rather straightforward. Kill everything on screen and keep yourself alive until the end of the wave. Now, that's rather simple, but it's complicated by the bottom of the screen there. As you see in the yellow text, that is my score, and on the right side is my combo meter. Now, as you kill enemies, that combo meter will increase, and then will count down until you kill another enemy, or it will go away at that point. So you want to keep on killing and killing and killing as much as you can, without little breaks in between, to get the highest combos going. Now, the only other way to reset your combo meter is to take damage, and that's where the simplicity of this game design in terms of its score mechanics works rather well with its controls. Now, you have the ability to dodge across screen so that you can keep the combo meter going, which is rather nice. This is what keeps the gameplay action-packed. This is what keeps the action fresh. But the thing is, is that the dodge obviously has a little bit of a problem if you're just using it recklessly. You can run into enemies really quickly and thus losing your combo. So there's a precision that you need in order to get the highest scores, and that will go to the people who practice over and over again. This works rather well for this game, and I love the score mechanics in it. Now, that is sort of a staple of this genre, but I feel like Bug Butcher did a good job of keeping that balance and keeping that score mechanic intact and updating it for a new sort of day. That combo meter also applies to the power meter on the right side there. You just saw me use it and it froze everything on screen. Now it's a random power and I do wish I had a little bit more control of which one came up, but it does provide you at least a way of getting out of some difficult situations, aka I'm about to get hit by 20 million things, let me freeze them or let me use some invulnerability in order for me to get out of there. Now I killed the last couple of guys here and I will be ranked based on the score and the time that I had left on the top left of the screen in the arcade mode. As you see there, I got a perfect and the combo bonus, a pretty good run. Now the gameplay is complemented by a good aesthetic. The thing is is that at all times I can see my character against the backdrop and the chaos on the screen and that's rather important in this game. Now, note the fact that he's orange, the bridge is orange, and the lava is orange. That is usually a bad idea, but because of the smart background decisions, as well as the different tones of orange that they used, it's easy to see him, and at all times, I know where he is. This is how you do this kind of realistic aesthetic. Even though it's colorful, I still think that background is realistic. I still feel like it, this is a factory that is being, you know, in the middle of nowhere and has these aliens overrunning it. Now the sound design does its job. I'm able to hear everything, getting hit sounds and things like that, hearing the bullets, you know, fire. It's just something about the sound design it felt like it felt a little off. I can't put my finger on it. It did the job, but when I turned off the sound for my testing in terms of okay, hit markers and things like that, I didn't notice it as much as I thought I should. So that was a little bit strange. I can't hold it against the game, but just something to point out. Now, performance-wise, the Bug Butcher does the job and it does it well. A high frame rate for an action game is important, and this game succeeds in almost every level of that. There are no frame drops that I saw, everything's crisp, the animation works rather well, but in particular, what I really want to point out on the technical side is the lack of loading times. A lot of games nowadays, for some reason, ha seem to have, you know, five to 10 second loading times on action games, which can actually really hurt the pacing of action games that you have to retry over and over again. And in some cases of the Bug Butcher, you're gonna have to do that. 
but in the Bug Butcher's case, you're right back in there. When you lose, the game throws you right back in at that point with maybe two or three seconds before you have to start over again, just to sort of, you know, change the screen and then bring you right back into it. I really appreciate that, and I know that's a small thing for some people, but you notice it over time, especially when you're playing levels over and over again and really struggling with it. Getting right back into it and getting right back into what did I do wrong is important. I really appreciate the Bug Butcher's performance in this case. Now, it's been a while since I've played Super Buster Brothers, a long while, and one of the things that I don't remember that this game does that that one didn't necessarily is how would the bigger enemies react to the gun. You'll notice that when I hit a bigger enemy, he'll sort of move horizontally, but he'll stop his motion vertically in some cases. Now, the game plays with that. Some bigger creatures will actually drop, you know, at a higher rate of gravity, so you can't keep them up, but that actually forces you to sort of, you know, react to the situation. What is going on? Okay, let me see if I can keep him up there, or oh crap, I gotta get out of the way. That's actually helping the game's variety in the long run. Now the game does well in the Twitch action gameplay genre. The thing is is that over time it will start to feel the same. The game could use a tiny bit more variety. Not to say that the game doesn't have variety here. It does have multiple enemy types that all act a little bit differently, although some of them do feel like the same thing, only a little bit tiny bit different. Don't doesn't really affect the long run. But you know, levels like this where you have the laser walls for example, they do change things a bit, especially when they're sort of malfunctioning. Now, with that said, in the groups of the arcade mode, you have five levels at once, all with the same sort of, you know, theme to it, the laser walls, for example, and then one elevator level, and that's about five sections in all. So there isn't necessarily the greatest amount of variety here. Now, with that said, it is an $8 game. It is a budget title, and for what you get otherwise, the game does rather well. I will say this though, if the game were to introduce DLC for maybe a buck or two with some more creatures and enemies, I would definitely be looking at into it even more at this point, because I think the game's got the basis down here. I really think the game has something going for it, just from the fact that it's so polished, it's so clean, and honestly, it is fun to play all the time. It just needs a tiny bit more. Now the single player does have an upgrade system, and the thing is the upgrade system is rather, rather basic. Yeah, you can upgrade your machine gun and your laser beam and your rocket launcher to level 3 and they'll do a little bit more damage or fire a little bit faster. I just don't necessarily think it was necessary. I think the base weapons work rather well, and you could give, you know, maybe an upgraded version of the weapon to drop, but the upgrade system itself, I just don't see the real point to it other than a bullet on the back of the box. It doesn't really add too much to the game, and in fact, the game doesn't even tell you about it until you get to the screen in question. You can go through the whole game without even bothering with it. Now, I did mention that there was a second mode, and that's the panic mode. The panic mode is basically the arcade mode if it were to be extended. The idea here is, is that survive as long as you can, and it'll just keep on giving you more waves after more waves after more waves. You can lose this one by, you know, running out of time, but you do get time bonuses that drop in terms of power-ups, as well as at the end of a wave. You can buy upgrades and weapons, which will drop if you buy them at this point. If you do play this mode, I do recommend buying a power-up first, because again, you can power that up with the kills you get, and that is sort of your get out of jail free card so i do recommend people to get it because it just makes it easier on yourself at that point now this mode does have a great balance to it because it will just keep on throwing enemies over and over again and in particular it does a great job of making you prioritize enemies now example the spider who will eat my friend over there he's not on screen right now but if he shows up on screen i have to kill him in a certain amount of time if there are too many enemies on screen i'm gonna have a hard time at that and in particular if you leave enemies that spawn other enemies you may run into this you know horrible situation where there's just so much on screen there is so much that happening at that point you don't know what to do and i actually love that at that point i love the fact that i was in a panic mode the entire time it was very very fitting of the name of the mode in question what actually may surprise you is that i think the bug butcher at its base price may be priced a little bit low to be honest with you yeah there is a lack of variety in some cases but there's a really good amount of polish here as i mentioned with the performance as i mentioned with the difficulty like you're seeing here with just you know a good amount of enemies on screen and it has that old arcade feeling that feeling of oh crap you know i would have to put another quarter to get through this section but at this point i'm just buying power-ups over and over again trying to figure out how to get through this section look at everything on screen 
if you want an adrenaline twitch game, I feel the Bug Butcher is not only a great choice for it at this point, it's also a great bargain for the price that it is at its main price of $7.99. All right, this is Dragonic signing out. I hope you got an idea of what exactly the Bug Butcher has to offer. I will leave my Steam review in the description below. If you do find this review helpful, you know, give that like on that review as well as the like on the video itself. It always helps its visibility as well as, you know, gives me an idea of exactly what I'm doing right or wrong. If you don't find it useful, well then let me know in the comment section below of what I can improve, what you want to know about, and I'll try to answer those questions as well. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. I do about three to four videos a week in terms of indie games, you know, non AAA games in question. I also have a Steam Curator group for anyone who's interested in the description below. All right, I'll see you all later and keep on gaming. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button in the middle of the screen. The last video I did will be in the top left and a related video to this will be in the top right. I do have a Twitter handle at the bottom left and a Facebook page at the bottom right. And of course, you can always subscribe to the Google Plus portion. Anyway, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.